what is this battery? It's not lithium and it's not lead acid. It's something totally different. Hi, I'm David and welcome to my YouTube channel where I like to DIY renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. We're gonna dive into this battery today. Now it's silica salt. It's something that's new to me. I've never tested one of these batteries before. So it's, we're gonna find out together what these can do. But we're gonna start off with two capacity tests. One on this battery right here, and then a little bit later, we're gonna test the one that I have in a deep freezer at sub-zero Fahrenheit temperatures. Both batteries arrived to me on the same day. Both batteries were below freezing when I got them. I let them sit for a week inside the garage to completely normalize in temperature. Then I paralleled both batteries together and I put them on a charger. The charger that I use is a five amp, 14.4 volt charger made for lithium iron phosphate batteries. 14.4 volts is the highest absorption voltage that you can use for these batteries. After they were both fully charged, I left one of them inside the garage right here where you see it, and the other one I put in the chest freezer. This battery has been off the charger overnight, and it looks like it has settled down to 13.22 volts. The batteries came with insulating caps for the posts, as well as stainless steel hardware. We have our ring terminals on the posts, and then the insulated caps that go over it. And now the wires come down to my test rig. Okay, we're all zeroed out and we're ready for the test. If you're interested in how I built this test rig with the wire leads, I have a video on it that I can leave a link in the description below. I compared this meter's accuracy to a few other meters and I found that uh, I have to add 7%. I'll be using this little space heater as my load and I'm gonna set it on the concrete under the camera. Switch on our inverter and that will switch on the load. And let's see what, our, what we are pulling for our amps. And it looks like our amps have settled down to about 22 amps. Uh, we're drawing 274 watts. So we'll just let this run and catch back later when it finishes. Here we go. So we're currently discharging at 24 amps. As We started at 22 amps, but as the voltage has dropped, uh, our amps have gone up. Well, the alarm just went off. It sounds terrible. 10.6 uh, volts here. All right, so this is the final value that we got. I just switched off the inverter, 73.9 amp hours. And if we multiply that by 1.07, we have 79 amp hours. And it took us a total of three hours and 16 minutes to do the discharge. Here's the data sheet for the battery. You can see that if you pull 17 amps and discharge the battery over the course of five hours, then you can get 85 amp hours out of it. Now we discharged it a little over three hours and we were pulling 22 to 24 amps during the duration of the test and we got 79 amp hours out of it. So I'd say it performed two spec. It seems like it's probably on that same curve. I'm going to put the charger on this one and we'll take this stuff out to the freezer and do a discharge test of the uh, cold battery. So right now, uh, just above negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's cold. Uh, I did go ahead and hook up an automatic temperature control. So this is what the temperature probe is reading. This is what it's set to, and there's a five degree differential. So it will cycle the freezer between negative 20 Fahrenheit and negative 15 Fahrenheit. And it'll go between that. Anyways, let's go ahead and I'm gonna move this stuff and hook up the components. Zeros across the board. We're reading 13.2 volts, and this battery is probably negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and turn this inverter on. And that is gonna turn on the space heater. Here's the space heater, it's on. As you might have noticed, I put the inverter up higher than the battery, and that's uh, just due to the stratification, just in case that, because that inverter is going to be putting out heat, so I want the warmer air at the top, and I want the battery to stay cold at the bottom. Okay, the heater is on, but I hear the inverter inside is buzzing. Oh, and it just killed the heater. Just shut off while I was out here. <laughs> Let's kill this. Here we go. Let's see what we did. We did 30.8 amp hours, 344 watt hours. <laughs> well, that's at 
negative 19.7. The, uh, the top number is what the temperature probe is reading. And that's right here. So certainly a... <laughs> So much less capacity at this cold temperature. So if we multiply by this, that's about 33 amp hours. So I didn't actually realize it was going to be that much less in the cold. But there we go. All right, I'm going to put the charger on this now. And this is going to slowly charge this battery back up overnight. Now this is a 5 amp charger, so it's a very slow rate and we'll keep it at negative 20 so this is the setting and this is what it is currently reading so i'm just going to leave that at negative 20 overnight we'll recharge this and then tomorrow we'll do another capacity test i just brought in the inverter and meter from the chest freezer and just look at the uh the meter there because all of this was sitting in that cold cold freezer So I'm going to have to let this sit for a while and warm up slowly before I turn it on. <laughs> that is cold. We're getting a nice snowfall tonight. Not very deep, but it looks pretty. And I've been checking this and for the last four hours the voltage hasn't changed. So this is a lithium charger set for 14.4. And this uh, battery keeps reading 14.18 volts and has not changed in the last four hours. So I'm going to call that full. I'm going to take this off. This battery has been inside the chest freezer at 20 degrees Fahrenheit for the past 24 hours. I've left it for 24 hours because I wanted to make sure the inside of the battery was at 20 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm about to hook up the meter and start another discharge test of this battery. We're going back to the space heater for this test. Now remember this is the 20 degree test. So this battery has been in the freezer for 24 hours at 20 degrees Fahrenheit. We've zeroed out the meter. Let's go ahead and turn everything on. The heater's off and I can hear the alarm. So the inverter died. Go ahead and we'll turn this inverter off. Looks like 59.3 amp hours and 698 watt hours. Let's do a quick comparison between the silica salt battery and what you might expect from an AGM or a lithium. Now for the AGM, I looked up several data sheets from some popular uh, battery manufacturers that produce lead acid AGM or absorbent glass mat. And I also looked up some data sheets from some popular lithium iron phosphate 100 amp hour packs. The numbers that I'm using here are fairly generic uh, to cover a category, not one particular battery or another. So we can see that the AGM battery beats out all the rest when it comes to price. The upfront cost is the cheapest by far. Uh, however, that comes at the cost of uh, more expensive in the long run. The AGM is the most expensive on a per cycle basis. So the lithium is the cheapest per cycle. Uh, so if you're building a power wall, something that you're going to be cycling daily, the lithium is the cheapest way to go. Now the silica salt is in between the two when it comes to cost per cycle and cost for the battery and it's kind of middle of the road on a lot of this. But the silica salt battery excels in cold cranking amps and in cold temperature. So I was trying to think through what application the silica salt battery might be best used for. Possibly a cabin that you might uh, leave for a month or more at a time and you don't want to have to worry about whether or not the battery is going to go dead due to cold weather or maybe on a boat where you need it to start the gas engine uh, so that you can then boat out in the middle of a lake or whatever. And then when you shut down, you still want it to have some deep cycle capacity for maybe a trolling motor or your fish finder or navigation equipment. Personally, I bought another one of these batteries and I'll be installing it in my golf cart in an upcoming video because I'm in a cold climate and I want to be able to leave the golf cart outside in the cold and not worry at all about what is going to happen to the battery. 
Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share. Check out the affiliate link in the description below for this battery if it happens to meet the requirements for your application. Thank you.